Within the future, health insurance could consume almost a quarter of your salary. Can you move your leg? But it provides medical miracles. Okay, Monsieur Descartes. Now I'll activate the chip in your head. This single chip will help him walk again. Let's practice some walking. Monsieur Degas? Does a brain chip sound impossible? Think again. Ready? Today there are hundreds of thousands of patients worldwide who are paralyzed. But in the future, we will have a computer chip that connects the brain directly to an arm or a leg, bypassing the injured spinal cord, and the paralyzed will walk again. Few people have thought as much about how to restore motion to paralyzed patients as John Donahue. For the last 20 years, he has been probing the mysterious signals of the brain. Every movement we make is controlled by brain cells called neurons. They emit millions of spikes of electricity, a storm of neural activity that is the secret language of the brain. Donahue wants to read it. The long-term goal was to see whether we could mathematically decode or translate the brain's language into something that a computer could understand and use. Matthew Nagel is paralyzed from the neck down. In 2004, he offered himself to Donahue for a daring trial. Donahue implanted an array of a hundred tiny electrodes into his brain to find out if the area of the brain that controls Matthew's arm still functions. During the surgical procedure, our goal was to put this tiny sensor uh, into the arm area of the motor cortex, the area of the brain where arm signals, arm movement signals are generated. So this tiny platform sat on top of the brain and the electrodes about one millimeter long would then go into the brain to pick up brain signals. So what we had hoped is that we could then record the patterns of brain activity that were still remaining after spinal cord injury and in particular we were interested whether just thinking about moving would allow us to drive a computer or other devices. The brain signals were relayed through a cord to a computer. Go on to open the first email, which is congrats. It says you are doing a great job. But the second email, which states... Incredibly, within just a few days, he could move a cursor by thought alone. Next, I'm going to paint a circle. This circle was drawn simply by thinking. That's the best circle I can do. The next step for Matthew is to control an entire arm or hand again. But before he can do that, researchers need to learn much more about how the limbs work. That's the job of computer scientist Michael Black. Using reflective markers and video cameras, he is capturing the motion of a hand and analyzing it in a computer. His goal is to learn how the brain controls the hand. To simply open a bottle, your hand uses all 15 joints in the fingers. But to black surprise, the brain doesn't control each joint individually. Instead, it seems to take shortcuts. For example, you can't move the joints of your fingers independently. The first and second joint of this index finger move in concert with each other. And what we're searching for is how all the fingers move together in a coordinated fashion to try and uncover the representation the brain might use to move the fingers in that way. If a limited number of commands from the brain can control hand movements, then it may be possible to discover how the brain controls limbs as well. In the future, a brain chip implanted at the base of the skull may transmit the brain's commands to a receiver further down the body, bypassing an injured spinal cord. The receiver then decodes the commands and sends them to the limbs. We're at the beginning of this age of neurotechnology and what I want to see is that we can have a physical repair of the nervous system. And what I mean is that someday 
you'll be sitting here interviewing someone and they'll be moving their hands, they'll be walking around, they'll be talking, and they will tell you that I'm in fact spinal cord injured, but I've been repaired by a brain gate chip in my motor areas that have reconnected my arms and my legs, and I play sports, I, I live a normal life. In 50 years, brain chips will allow trauma victims to manipulate their limbs, but one has gone further. He manipulated his records. Aha, my friend. Degas Alain, suspicion of manipulation confirmed. Cancel insurance coverage immediately. Confirmed. Degas Alain, cancel insurance coverage immediately. Now when I let go of you, just think of walking. What were you thinking? What? Oh. Maybe I should come back in a few minutes. What's the problem? The results for your Euro tests before and after the accident don't match up. You manipulated them. I had a few drinks in mind before. I was just trying to keep my premiums down. And our personal care are refusing to pay a dime. You know what that means. And I. You're not insured. Monsieur Degas, I'm sorry. Treatments for those without premium insurance will be limited, but attempting to beat the system could be fatal. In 2057, a patient loses his insurance, loses an operation, and stands to lose his life. Oh no. But another patient's loss could prove his salvation. A patient with premium insurance has died, and now the doctor is taking a risky gamble. Sorry, Jacqueline. It's after hours, and security is lax in the non-insured ward. Marie, what are you doing here? Everything we do from now on could cost me my job. I'm giving you the insurance tip of a first-class patient. What have you done? He was dead already. There's a way to adjust the machine so that he looks like he's still alive to central monitoring. Are you crazy? What are you going to do with the other guy? Paper, he'll die two days later. I'm going to build the heart to his chip and then operate on <clears throat> Then operate on you as planned tomorrow. Then I'll switch the chips back to insurance that'll look like he died in surgery. What if you get caught? The next morning, Alan arrives in the operating room. His custom printed heart is ready. Now, who have we got here? Jacques Martin, born 4595, 90 kilograms, platinum level. Heart transplant with engineered organ. Can you believe he's 62 years old? He's in good shape, Monsieur Jacques Martin. Concentration, please. Everyone ready? Patient hypertherm. During surgery, doctors won't have to touch the patient. 